Hi, and welcome to Comedy Recapped. Today we're going to be exploring 1984's Batteries Not Included. Warning, spoilers ahead, beware. As we open up on antique photographs, we see how a man and his wife, Frank and Faye, met each other after wartime. They raised a family in the middle of a large city and also opened up a nice little cafe. They have made this neighborhood their home and are still standing even after construction and developments have taken over most of the city. Construction equipment swings through and demolishes most of what's left, but Faye continues on her morning walk down the dilapidated street. As more construction workers bring in more equipment and supplies, Riley's Cafe stands alone but they get a little scared when one of the tractors gets a little close. Frank makes his way out to make sure that he doesn't lose the cafe, but it turns out the worker just wants to get some breakfast. Back inside, we meet Sid and Muriel, who help run the cafe. Soon after, we see Marissa, who is making her way home, and she's being harassed by a group of thugs hired to scare tenants into vacating their homes, led by a very rude Carlos. As Carlos and his goons make their way through the apartment complex, it becomes clear that no one is happy with the fact that they may have to move in a few days. Eventually, the thugs make their way to the cafe, and Carlos goes on a rampage where he breaks everything in sight. Frank even tries to call the police to handle the group. After the police leave, Mason shows up with a woman that he's hoping will make the building part of a historical movement but she doesn't see that there's enough left to save at this point. Frank goes back into the cafe and he starts to pick up the pieces of what's left of his life. When Mason goes back upstairs, he finds that his girlfriend is in the process of moving out, and he tries to explain that there's no point in trying to save anything in this town. Meanwhile, Sid packs up things for his family, and he explains that he took the money to pay for a retirement home. Frank says goodbye to his good friends, and that night, he tries to give Faye her medicine. The reality of Faye's mind going is making things harder for Frank, but he perseveres. Everyone else in the building seems to have lost what little bit of hope they did have, but Frank calls out for someone to help them that night. Little did he know that something was outside the window looking in. As a UFO hovers around outside, it slowly investigates Frank and Faye before flying into the kitchen where it seems to focus on the electrical socket. Soon, it calls another UFO inside, and we see that this one is having technical difficulties. As it crashes on the kitchen counter, a ramp opens up, and an arm protrudes and plugs into the house. Amidst all of the commotion, Faye wakes up and goes to investigate. She notices that someone has fixed some of the broken items, and she finds her wedding veil on the kitchen floor. Things are really starting to seem peculiar. If that wasn't enough, Faye follows a runaway toaster up the stairs until she comes to the roof. The toaster comes to a stop in an old garden shed, and when she goes inside, she discovers the UFOs. The next morning, Frank is looking for the toaster while Faye is trying to make bowls fly like UFOs. Frank starts to call the retirement home to get more information, but when he finds the picture is repaired, he goes to find Faye who has walked off. Meanwhile, everyone else in the complex starts to notice that things they thought were broken before are now mysteriously fixed. As Frank passes some of the other neighbors, they head to the roof to find Faye is feeding the scrap metal in the garden some bolts and nails. Once the neighbors and Frank think that Faye is off her rocker, she decides to show them that she's not making anything up. She breaks Frank's pocket watch, and the group of residents all witness the UFOs repair his watch like new. The group goes down to the cafe where they find out that everything is fixed like new, and Faye grabs Frank to dance around the cafe. Later that day, Frank, Marissa, and Mason try to research who the little guys are. All of a sudden, the residents hear one of the robots trying to take a bread box to the roof, and they try to communicate with it. It doesn't go so well, but when Mason goes to call the police, Carlos appears and starts to question them. Within seconds, the UFOs appear and lure him up to the roof. Against warning, Carlos snoops around the shed. He emerges frightened out of his mind and runs off as fast as he can. That night, Mason tries to check out what makes the little UFO run, and Frank begins to think that they are there to help their little complex. 
Back in Faye's apartment, Marissa is there to visit and look at some photo albums. Faye tells Marissa all about their son that doesn't really come by anymore because of Frank's temper. Suddenly, Frank calls everyone to the roof where they watch the UFOs perform a little air show. It turns out that their air show was actually a little mating dance. When the residents gather as many cords as they can to make an extension from the plug to the roof, Harry, the super, appears to lend a helping hand, and everyone seems to be lovely neighbors for a night. The next day, Carlos is spying on the complex from across the way, and he tries to explain everything to his crew. They aren't too receptive about the idea that something is helping the residents of the old complex. Back on the roof, Mason and Marissa watch as the UFOs seem to be building something, and we find out that Marissa is waiting for her boyfriend to come back. When she goes back into her room, she notices all of Mason's art is set up in her apartment, and she tells him that he might be the one that aliens are there for. That night, everyone watches as one of the UFOs gives birth to twin robots. They look on as the robots take their first steps in the garden. Frank takes this time to pledge to the UFOs that they'll protect them for as long as they can. But there was apparently one more robot that didn't make it through the process. They bury the third robot the next morning, and there starts to be a divide in the neighbors. Mason believes that it is just a bucket of bolts that needs to be studied. Faye and Marissa, on the other hand, believe that the robots have tiny souls. Harry ends up stealing the robots out of the dirt to take back to his apartment. Once there, Harry starts taking parts and batteries from all over the apartment, and he gets to work on the little robot. Meanwhile, Riley's Cafe is booming downstairs, and Frank and Faye start serving customers like they haven't had in a long time. Frank even has one of the UFOs in the kitchen helping making the food. Up on the roof, Carlos goes to the shed to find whatever attacked him earlier, but fails to do so. He then goes down to the cafe to get some answers, but instead he gets Faye, who treats him like her long-lost son. Everything is going well until one of the UFOs is seen back in the kitchen. Carlos ends up leaving, and Faye can't help but feel hurt. Back in the complex, Harry gives up on the little robot, and it ends up going down the drain, where it mixes with a multitude of chemicals before getting pulled through the tubes. Harry follows the clanking sound through the pipes until he finds the robot pop out of another drain, alive. Later, in town, Carlos goes to meet executives to plead for his job, and he meets Mr. Lacey, who is the man that is buying up all the property in the neighborhood. When Lacey explains that he has other options for how to get everyone out of the complex, Carlos assures him that he can do it himself. Back at the complex, Mason is in Marissa's apartment, and he's trying to paint her in a new light. Just as he finishes, Marissa's boyfriend finally decides to come home. Upset by this, Mason spends the night drinking alone. When he returns to the building, he finds Marissa inside his apartment. She explains that she sent her boyfriend away, and she is here for him instead. Down in the basement, Carlos has broken in, and he's taking an axe to all the pipes and electric meters. When he goes to leave the basement, the UFOs come down to investigate. Soon, Mason and Frank are on the way down as well, but the UFOs find Carlos first. Carlos swings at one of them, and it crashes into the wall and breaks on the floor. When the other UFO sees what happened, everyone chases Carlos up to the ground floor, and Harry even shows up with his old boxing gloves. After Harry throws Carlos out, Fee can't help but see her son in him and she cries out for them to help him. Frank tries to explain that their son is dead, but Faye can't help but blame him as though no time has passed at all. Faye is frozen in the past, and she's making Frank relive the pain of driving their son away. Faye runs upstairs as the rest of the crew go out into the town to look for the little robots. Back at the apartment complex, an associate of Mr. Lacey's shows up, and he makes it so a fire will start in the basement at any second. Up on the roof, the remaining UFO ends up fixing the other one, and they go out into the town to find the robots as well. Their work is cut short thanks to Harry, who has called all three of them back to him. When the UFOs catch up to them, the repaired UFO isn't too keen on helping them anymore. Even though they try to explain that it was all Carlos's fault, the UFOs fly out. Back at the complex, Carlos learns of the executive greaser that was hired to burn the building down. 
he isn't too keen on another man taking credit for his work. After he gets the man outside, Faye makes her presence known from the window, and Carlos realizes that he's going to have to save her from the impending explosion. Carlos goes to Faye's apartment to try and convince her to leave with him, but once he starts to play along as her son, she realizes that he isn't her son. As Faye finally comes to her senses, Carlos goes to search for the fire starter, but he's too late. As the fire starts, Faye looks at a newspaper clipping that explains how her son died in a car crash when he was 18. Carlos makes his way back down to Faye, and he breaks into the apartment to get her to safety. As the fire rages, emergency services drive past the other neighbors as they all approach the complex. Once there, they see that Carlos has carried Faye down the fire escape. Frank goes with her to the hospital. Mason starts to chase after Carlos, but the building begins to collapse as the fire continues. By morning, not much is left besides the foundation. Construction crews roll up to the building, and they all come to a halt when they see Harry is still sitting on the steps. The crew agree not to do anything until he moves on his own accord, and Harry sits there all day. When night comes, Harry hears the whir of the small robot he brought back to life, and the rest of the family soon follows. Only this time, they have a whole lot more of the family with them to help. The next morning, Frank tries to get Faye to leave with him, but all she wants is to go back to the home she's lost. Carlos even comes in with flowers, and Frank tries to play up the idea of him being their son, but Faye doesn't see things the way she did. Soon after, police officers show up to gather Frank, Faye, Mason, and Marissa. They take them to the explosion site, and they find that the entire complex has been rebuilt to its original glory. After some time, we see that the surrounding area has been built up into tall skyscrapers, but that small piece of home remains untouched amongst giants. And that wraps up Batteries Not Included. We hope you've enjoyed this recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single video.